What's up, y'all? And of course, welcome to another Alternative Factuals video. No funny, I missed y'all. Like, no funny. It has been crazy out there with this whole COVID-19 and this corona situation. Um, so I'm going to do a video that's a little bit more upbeat, something a little bit more enjoyable, less, uh, not philosophical per se, but something that is, you know, less, uh, you know, less wordy in terms of opinion uh, obviously i will always do videos like that because obviously based on the watch um the views and the watch time minutes and stuff like that you guys are super into that and i am glad i'm glad i have amassed the audience that enjoys videos like that but also we can have fun we know how to have fun if one thing i can say about black people is we have a great sense of humor but um so today we're going to be talking about an all black avengers well i say avengers huh avengers team um, so I already said I was going to try and drop a video this week. Like I said, last week was a hassle. Uh, this COVID-19 got me working as an essential worker in a pharmacy and all that stuff. Um, so it's been a little bit overwhelming, uh, extra hours and, um, at least for me, but, um, hopefully this message finds you in good tidings. Hopefully you got your nice little stimulus and got your account stimulated and percolated. But, um, without further ado, let's kind of just wait before I do that. Look at me already forgetting. Please be sure to like, share, and of course, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you're feeling. And without further ado, let's kind of just dive into this. Okay. So today I'm going to be doing something. This is like my personal team of like, let's say if the Avengers team was in a universe where it was all black people. This is the video that I'm going to say, like, this is my personal roster. People who I think could either match the Avengers in terms of what they're capable of, even though in some cases I think the Avengers are not very efficient, but maybe possibly even more powerful in terms of what they're capable of and including intellect. So without further ado, let's kind of just dive into this. So uh, my first pick above all else, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people who have been following me since the beginning of this channel would obviously see like, of course, he's going to pick this guy. And that would be Blue Marvel. Now, for those of you who are not aware who Blue Marvel is, Blue Marvel is someone who came into existence in terms of real life. I believe it was 2008, 2009 by Kevin Graveau. Uh, he created Blue Marvel, but when it comes to continuity, he actually is existed in the 1960s. So basically, he designed himself to protect his country. He served as a hero for years, and he was very popular at the time, but the government forced him to, to retire basically because he was black. But he, this is a dude who can actually manipulate matter. He has uh, the ability to manipulate antimatter as well. You know, he can exert energy, absorb different types of energy. He has some form of cosmic awareness and his upper limit to his physical strength has not been calculated as of yet. He actually murked the Ultimate Universe Hulk with a single punch, a single uppercut. So in terms of physical feats and power, he is definitely off the charts and he is someone that you do not want to run into because there's no chance you'll probably be able to beat him. So so, um, yes, I would include him. Um, he's my number one pick because one, he's scary powerful. Two, he is a genius level intellect. Um, he has the experience of a hero, basically. He was, I believe, in his 30s when he first got his powers, when it came to that whole accident with the antimatter ray. And then he served as a hero from that point all the way until present day because he still does exist. So if you do that math, he was already in his 20s, right? 20s or 30s. And then from the 60s all the way now, like he's about technically when it comes to age, he should be maybe like 80 years old and he is barely aged and he looks like a middle-aged man so that's incredible powerful powerful stuff um my second pick would be of course black panther um black panther is a king at the end of the day you know he gets these abilities from the heart-shaped herb obviously that grows in wakanda that is irradiated from the vibranium that is pretty much their primary means of making money um, but ultimately he does have enhanced strength, enhanced speed. Um, he's a genius level intellect, a masterful tactician, and he can commune and gain the knowledge of previous Black Panthers when it comes to, you know, situations regarding, you know, previous interactions when it comes to the wars and generations before that. And he is king of the dead still. So, um, he has the ability to control the dead. Uh, one common theme you're going to notice about a lot of these characters, not even just because they're my picks, but a lot of black characters in general are extremely powerful. Now, I don't know if they decided to make black characters powerful because they felt bad because they just started to introduce black characters relatively recently compared to their white counterparts, or they just genuinely wanted these people to be powerful. But, um, Black Panther would definitely be on it. Cause remember, he's also a genius level intellect. We're dealing with two people who are genius level intellects who are definitely within the top 10 to 15 people in the world when it comes to their level of thinking and what they're capable of, as well as the resources and powers that they have. These two already are pretty much comparable to the Avengers as is, and it's only two of them. 
So I'm just gonna, you know, pretty much say that. Uh, when it comes to my secondary, uh, well, I'll say third uh, character for the team, I would actually pick Sync. Now, Sync is indeed a part of the mutant race, but basically, Sync is a mutant who's able to sync up with other mutants and use their powers of it as if it's his own meaning he is not someone who's just limited to you know one specific set of powers now if i were to be relatively loose with this i would say his powers are not limited to just mutants i personally believe that it is very much possible that he could actually duplicate powers of other people and he is not someone who's like you know a genius level intellect for example he is someone who is just you know an extension of the powerhouse that they're going to have on the team um, don't get me wrong, he's been with the X-Men, so he's had training in hand-to-hand -hand combat, he's masterful with that, but ultimately, he is powerful nonetheless, and he is someone who, the few, you know, the times we've seen him in comics, great character uh, development, and just overall, you know, he has the ability to grow on a team, especially with a team that not only understands his, you know, massive amount of power, but ultimately, people who look just like him in terms of being African-American, and technically, even though he may be a mutant, all these other people are human mutates to some degree so it's not like they're too far apart in terms of relatability so i think he would fit in on the team pretty well and i think they could use a younger character on it to kind of pull things together now four i believe dr voodoo should be on the team now everyone pretty much is going to say like okay yes the avengers doesn't really have like a magic based character at least not officially you know i think dr strange has been on the avengers a couple times in a couple instances um, I'm pretty sure they've had a couple magic based characters in a few instances and stuff like that when it comes to uh, the Avengers in general, but I think this would be a permanent mainstay for the black or the all black uh, Avengers team. And that's a dope name, by the way. Imagine the all black Avengers team is literally just called all black like that's beast. But um, I think he should definitely be a mainstay of the uh of the all black avengers team now dr voodoo is basically someone who's born in haiti his name is jericho drum uh he left to america to become a doctor one day he received the word that his brother was dying and of a voodoo curse he learned he got revenge basically by learning voodoo from papa jumbo but basically he actually at one point was sorcerer supreme and he is basically an equal to dr strange when it comes to power and knowledge so he is no joke nonetheless um, moving forward, my fifth character that I would kind of want to be a part of this team is obviously I have to add a female to this, but obviously my number one pick for when it comes to a female is Monica Rambeau. Now, oh my God. Now I've said this in a couple other videos and I've did this in a tag team video that I did with uh, Ernie the Blurred Without Fear, but um, Monica Rambeau is another powerhouse in Marvel Comics and a lot of people sleep on her like crazy but her power set is ridiculously off the chart she has the ability to absorb and generate and just give off any type of energy that's on the electromagnetic field which means she's borderline kind of like she can manipulate matter but only to such a degree not so much like you know a franklin richards or even to the um to the um full power of blue marvel for example but ultimately she does have a form she does have a way of manipulating energy all within the electromagnetic spectrum and this energy form gives her the ability to control things like cosmic rays gamma rays x-rays and ultraviolet rays you know all that stuff she can control all of it which means she's next to or matter manipulator adjacent so she is no joke and like i said she is a power house when it comes to the abilities and what she's capable of when it comes to her powers and she definitely has an energy form that allows her to survive in space and in my personal opinion i think she is more powerful than carol danvers um i believe that was confirmed at one point i don't know was it the new thunderbolts uh, i forget when it was but or it might have been the mighty avengers at one point but ultimately i do think she is extremely powerful and she is someone you don't want to sleep on. Now, the next person I would want on this team, uh, this is a person who does not actually appear in Marvel Comics too frequently, and I think um, not too many people might know who he is. Some people might know who he is because of the X-Men video, I say video, X-Men movie that came out when it came to First Class. Um, they showed his character in that movie, but they played his character super hard. Like, that's not who that character was, and there's no way he should have been killed off the way that he was, and I think it was because he was black, <laughs> but um, besides the point. The next character I would want on here is, of course, another X-Men, but um, his name is Darwin. Now, the reason I'm merging the X-Men with the Avengers team is because, obviously, Wolverine has been on the Avengers and New Avengers and stuff like that on multiple occasions for the most part. 
So um, it's not rare for, you know, mutants to be able to join in on the Avengers team and all that stuff. That's not something uncommon. Obviously, it wouldn't really happen right now with the whole, you know, House of X, Powers of Ten, whatever. The, you know, basically the whole setup that they have going with Krakoa and, and them kind of becoming their own sovereign nation. Obviously, that would not be the best situation right now. But I'm just speaking, you know, relative in terms of what I think would be the best team. But Darwin. Armando Munez. Now, even though his name obviously suggests that he may be Hispanic, one common misconception that a lot of people may have is that people who are like, you know, Puerto Rican, Dominican, uh, Haitian, a lot of those Caribbean islands, obviously they are very much correlated and descend from black people. And obviously they descend from black people because of the transatlantic slave trade. A lot of those stops, Africans were stopped off and basically they began to commingle with the people who were already on the island as well as their, you know, slavers who were the ones sleeping with them forcefully and then obviously you have kids who dilute the black you know bloodline but that's besides the point but um he still counts as a you know african-american or a person of color when it comes to uh my avengers rasa now darwin is extremely powerful and he's extremely powerful in a very specific way um darwin is a mutant who evolves and and he's basically designed to survive anything and everything now, one thing about his ability is it's not necessarily voluntary. He cannot control how his body causes him to evolve in, in order for him to survive whatever situation he's in. But nonetheless, he will live. There's no killing him. At one point, I think he was overcharged with energy. And because his physical body could not handle the amount of energy he absorbed, his mutation allowed him to evolve into a pure energy form which was ridiculous. And so, like I said, his powers in itself are not very voluntary. It's a very passive ability. It just does what it does on its own. And his body figures out what it has to do, you know, regardless of what control he wants. I think to some degree, he has very little control. He can kind of give his body cues to evolve in a certain kind of way, but that's not something that's guaranteed. But um, he's extremely powerful and he is no joke. He can live forever. He can survive anything and he can adapt to the powers of the people on his team to kind of amplify their abilities if the situation possibly called for it. So that would be super dope to see one day. But um, Darwin is definitely one of those characters where I feel like we need more time to see him on screen, but also having him on a in conjunction with another team kind of helps him develop a character individually, but also see how he interacts with characters from different walks of life. Um, also, there's another mutant on the team, so ultimately they can still bond and kind of talk about the situation and so on and so forth. Now, I already know this video is going to be like hella long. Well, not like that long, but just long-ish on the longer end, definitely more than 10 minutes. But um, I think I'm going to wrap it up in terms of I'm going to give my last character here. Now, I'm actually going to put someone who's relatively physically weak compared to the rest of his team, um, definitely on the lower end of the spectrum right next to Black Panther. But in all honesty, I actually would put Falcon on this team. Now, Falcon is someone who does have the experience. He is someone who does have leadership experience. He does have tactician experience. And he is somebody who has donned the title of Captain America. So at one point, he was someone who even Captain America saw worthy to, you know, lead a group of people or kind of be a beacon for justice and truth, supposedly. But um, this is someone who Captain America had deemed worthy. And besides the fact that, you know, Captain America deemed him worthy, I personally think based on the things I've seen and even some of the older comics when it had Falcon back in, you know, like the 70s and 80s and 90s and whatever like that. Um, ultimately, I do think he's capable. He does have the experience and I think he would work very well in conjunction with Blue Marvel, with Black Panther, with Darwin, with a lot of these characters because Falcon has literally had interactions with multiple different types of people with superpowers as well as people from different walks of life. He has literally been someone who has been struggling for money. He knew he at one point he's had a bunch of money. You know, he he kind of knows people far and in between when it comes to powers, mutants, uh, human mutates, uh, magic. He's had interactions with all these things, even technology. You know, he himself may not be necessarily a genius. Um, he is highly intelligent, nonetheless, masterful tactician, uh, masterful hand to hand combatant. Um, so I think he would merge with the team very well with his experience combined. And with this roster alone, even if we don't have the numbers per se to match up with a lot of the other characters when it comes to the Avengers roster or the current Avengers roster, this team alone could probably be a lot more efficient and effective based on knowledge, power, and the fact that they probably would work a lot better together because one thing I know about black people is, don't get me wrong, uh, we're not perfect. No group of people, no race or ethnicity is perfect. But one thing I can say is when we are mentally synced, once we get to know each other, once we cool, once we deem each other as family, 
uh, we definitely hold it down and we definitely can get some things done once we kind of get focused and, you know, develop this plan that we're going to do something and we actually follow through and do it. So that's one thing I say about black people as a whole um, in general. So um, let me know what you thought about this list. Let me know how you felt about it. This is my personal list. Let me know who you feel like would be the best all black Avengers team. And uh, if you're new to the channel, please be sure to like, share and of course, subscribe. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you're feeling. And I hope to see you later on. Mm, peace out.